Have you ever heard of the application called Shizuku? Many people feel the app can be very difficult to set up, but it's actually rather easy with the help of wireless debugging on Android. So let me show you how to get the service up and running rather quickly. Shizuku is a popular app that uses ADB to implement some non-user facing features on Android. I like to use it with an application called Kanta to remove bloatware from my phone. And others seem to enjoy the app for its ability to unlock 90 FPS and 120 FPS modes in games like PUBG. But there are hundreds of apps that can benefit from having Shizuku running on your device. As its main draw is giving people the ability to control their phone to do things that used to require root access. The app used to be rather difficult to get the service up and running, but there's actually an easy way of doing this with the help of wireless ADB. The first thing that you will need to do is download the Shizuku APK file from GitHub. I'll have this page linked down in the video description below as well as the pinned comment here so that it's easy for everyone to find. And you'll want to grab the official version from GitHub so that you aren't putting anything malicious on your device. You're also going to need to have developer mode enabled on your Android smartphone or tablet. We do this by tapping on the build number entry within the about phone section around seven to 10 times but I can also include a link to a dedicated guide down below for anyone who is not familiar with this process and needs a little bit of extra help. Once you have access to this hidden developer options menu, you'll want to scroll through the list until you get into the debugging section. And you're gonna find an option here labeled wireless debugging. It will be disabled by default but we can turn it on with a simple tap. Once this has been enabled, you may see a prompt appear asking if you want to allow debugging access through your local connected Wi-Fi network. Go ahead and grant that access. And I even tap the always allow access since this is my personal home wireless network. Once you have all of that set up, you can now begin the process of starting the Shizuku service with the help of wireless debugging. Since you already have that enabled, we just want to go ahead and open up the Shizuku application again, and then we're gonna tap on the pairing button. When you first see this page, you'll be told that Shizuku needs access to your notifications in order for the pairing process to go smoothly. So grant that access and then you'll see a screen like this. Now you will also have seen the drop down menu appear, but we can ignore that for now if you want. And you're also going to need to make note of this message as well, since Shizuku should not be optimized on any device, as the operating system will kill it or archive the app entirely if you don't use it frequently enough. But we'll go over this a little bit later. So we can either go to the developer options menu on our own, or we can tap on this button here, and that will take us right to this menu. And we're gonna scroll back down through this page again until you see the wireless debugging feature again, except this time we're gonna tap on the text for this feature. Then we're gonna tap on the pair device with pairing code option. And then make note of the pairing code, 433436. 433436. Once you enter the correct code, you will see that the Shizuku service can be started now. So let's minimize that, open up Shizuku, go back to the main page, and then tap on that start button right here. You'll see some text scroll on the screen as it gets everything up and running. 
and then you'll see Shizuku is running displayed up here at the top. With all of this done and the Shizuku service up and running, now is the time for you to install or open up the app that needs access to Shizuku because then you can launch that application and grant it access to this service. If you're on a phone that has issues with the battery optimization feature, or if you notice that the service starts and then stops a few seconds later, we can fix that by long pressing on the app icon for Shizuku and then tapping into the app info page. From here, look for the app battery usage menu. And then from here, we're gonna tap on the actual text for allow background usage. And it's here that you will change this from optimized to unrestricted. It will be set to optimized by default and we just change it over to unrestricted. This means Android will not kill this app in the background for battery optimization purposes. And you can see that you're done here and that your Shizuku service is up and running. And as always, if anyone had any issues following this guide, or if you just have a question about Android in general, then please feel free to use the comments section down below. I want to thank every one of you for sticking with me to the end of this video. It honestly means a lot to see people watching these videos to the very end. And don't forget to give this video a like as well, while also subscribing to the channel for more Shizuku-related content like this.